modules sidebar. With this module, you can easily show and hide content at the side or the top or bottom. It could, for example, be a menu. So let's see what kind of sidebar you can create. We have the default sidebar without any content right here in the left side. We can add a typical vertical menu to the sidebar looking like this. We could add any other content as well. Then we can specify the left side, right side, the top or the bottom. Notice that these must have some content, for example a menu to appear. Then we can specify the width. We have a very thin, a thin, a wide and a very wide sidebar. We can also specify the animation. It can be push in like this, an overlay like so, scale down, uncover, slide along or slide out. Some of these animations are only for vertical sidebars. Finally, we can have a custom context. So see right here, we have this sidebar showing and hiding inside of this uh, block here. Now let's see how we create all of this. So here in our practice section, we can see that we have all the toggle buttons in place and we have some menu markup above the main nav bar, which will be the content of our sidebar. And we also have some markup here, but we'll take it from the start. To create the default sidebar, we have this button here. Then we have a data example target attribute with the value data example default. That's been added by me, so I can connect this to the sidebar in the various examples. You could also just use classes to initialize the sidebar. Now, this first example will look for a element with the data example default attribute, which is this one. To turn this into a sidebar, we must add the classes UI sidebar. And then we must create the JavaScript to make this work. We can see that I've cheated a little bit and already started. I have the data example target attribute selected with jQuery and I have attached the click event to it. Now I will add the variable example example target equals the value of the data attribute example target. So we'll look for an element with the data example target attribute and we take the value of this attribute and store it in the variable called example target. Then we want to target the attribute with this value from the variable like so, and run the sidebar method on it with the parameter toggle. So once again, listen for a click event on this element, then store the value of the example target data attribute in this variable, and then run the sidebar method on the element with that uh, data attribute. So for example, here we have the click event for this data attribute and we'll look for this data attribute to initialize our sidebar data example default. All right, let's see this in action. I'll refresh. Now I'll toggle the sidebar here. So this was the default sidebar. Now, to create our menu sidebar, we have the same button and we want to look for this element, data example menu, which we can find right here. So here we have the basic vertical menu with three items. To turn this into a sidebar, 
we add the class sidebar, like so. This is already initialized with JavaScript, like the first example, so we can go back into the browser and refresh. And now we can see our menu appearing and disappearing. Notice that it's gone from the top here now because it's a sidebar that's hidden on load. Now let's see how we can create this sidebar in different places. We have our next four buttons here, left, right, top and bottom. And we have these different data or th these different values in our data attribute. So this refers to these four examples here. So in the first one, we want to add the classes UI left sidebar. And in the second one, we'll add the classes UI and right and sidebar. In the top and bottom sidebar, they require menu or other HTML content to be visible. So that's why I have this uh, menu already in them. We must add the class top and sidebar to them. And in the bottom one, we add the class bottom and sidebar. Let's save this, go back into the browser and refresh. Now, more content in the top disappeared. So we have the left sidebar here, the right sidebar there, the top sidebar there, and the bottom sidebar there. All right, let's continue to sidebar width. So we'll scroll a little bit down and take a look here at our buttons. So we can see that we once again have the data example target attribute with these different values. And they are targeting these four examples up here in the same way as all the previous examples did. So now we can start adding our classes. The first one will get the classes UI, very thin and sidebar. The second one will get the classes UI, thin and sidebar. The third one will get the classes UI, wide and sidebar. And the second one will get the classes UI very wide sidebar. Let's save this and go back into the browser and refresh. Now when we click on it, we can see the sidebar appearing with different width. Great. Now let's talk about animation. We'll scroll down here, take a look at our buttons. Now we have a new data attribute called data example animation and we have different values here different ways to animate our sidebar so let's go to the top again and take a look here we have this code with the vertical menu where we want to uh, do some animation on. So first of all we must add the sidebar class here. Alright, and then we want to scroll all the way down to the JavaScript part. Now we want to initialize this in kind of the same way as before. So let's create the variable called example animation and then we want to store the value of the data attribute with the name data example animation in this variable so we take the value of the data example animation attribute and store it in this variable and then we want to target our element with the data example animation target attribute which we saw in the top and run the sidebar method and now we want to apply some settings so we add the parameter setting then we must pass the parameter transition and then the example animation variable which hold the value or the type of transition. And then finally we run the sidebar method 
with the parameter toggle. Let's save this and go back and refresh. Now when we click it we can see the push animation. Here we have the overlay animation and the scale down animation. And for only vertical sidebars, we have the uncover animation, the slide along animation, and the slide out animation. Our final example is for a sidebar with a custom context. Here we see that we have this top attached menu with a bottom attached segment. Inside of this segment, we have a vertical menu, which will turn into a sidebar. And then we have a basic segment inside with some text content. So if we look inside of our code editor, we can see that we have the top attached menu with a link inside. And then we have the bottom attached segment with the vertical menu and the basic segment with text content, as I just said. So to turn this into a sidebar, we first add the sidebar class to the menu here. Then we must also add the pushable class so it becomes UI bottom attached pushable segment. And to wrap around our UI basic segment, we add the class pusher. So the content that we want to be pushed, the main content, will be wrapped in an element with the class pusher. And the parent element for all of our code will get the class pushable. Then inside we have our sidebar and main content. Now let's see how we initialize this with JavaScript. We already have the data example custom uh, targeted here with jQuery, selected here with jQuery, and we'll listen for the click event. So now we want to select the data example custom target element like so and run the sidebar method with the some settings we have the context and the value of that will be a jQuery selector for the context was which will be our bottom attached segment like so and then we also run the sidebar method with the toggle parameter like so Let's say this go back and refresh first we can see that the sidebar menu disappears since it's not been uh, activated yet and now we can toggle our sidebar with this link here. So this is how to create a sidebar with custom context. And this was all about how to use the sidebar module.